everybody, and welcome to another episode of Connect with KB. It's so great to have you tuning in with us again as we talk about leadership and education, business, and all the wonderful things that connect us to each other. My guest today just returned from the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas, where he finished 216 out of over 8,000 entries. He's taking this job and career very seriously and is clearly putting himself on the national scene and being recognized for his discipline and talent. I want to welcome to the podcast my good friend, Dominic Choma. Thanks for having me, KB. Absolutely, Dom. You and I go way back Mm -hmm. and um, just incredible to watch your journey and what you've done. I mean, not only most recently, but you know, you and I have known each other for years and years and years. And uh, I want you to start with the Dominic Choma story and tell the (laughs) listeners who you are. All right. Uh, Yeah, my name is Dominic Choma. Um, For me and you, we've probably known each other for probably half my life now since I was 15 or 16 with me and... Uh, Chrissy playing golf together in high school. Yep. Um, 30 years old. I am now a professional poker player. I've been doing that for two years. Uh, before that, I worked at a, I was a club fitter and a manager down at a golf shop in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, went to Hazel High School, class 2010, graduated from Trine University 2014. Uh, I did have a golf management degree, so this career doesn't work out, at least I do have a fallback plan with my degree, but uh, hopefully that doesn't have to come into play. Well, but. hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you've kind of set yourself up very nicely. Your personality uh, and intellect <laughs> and discipline uh, really bodes well for playing professional poker. How did you get into it? How did you, because, I mean, you were quite the athlete. Mm-hmm. Uh, you played basketball, uh, baseball, golf mm-hmm. uh, at Hazlitt, uh, had a great run, uh, enjoyed that, obviously went and uh, got a golf management degree from trying, uh, kind of ventured into golf after yeah. that, becoming a club fitter. But how did the professional poker start to kind of come about and for you to kind of turn in terms of career? Um, yeah, so I'd been playing poker kind of recreationally for years, um, and I, I, it became a profitable hobby for me my freshman, sophomore year of college, where at least I could make a little bit of money, and I kind of kept that along for you know the next seven, eight years, and I think summer and fall of 2019, I was kind of starting to realize like maybe managing people and you know kind of getting into upper management isn't really what I want to do with the company I was working with. Or, um, and I just remember my friend David Kay and I went out to Vegas in January of 2020, like right before the pandemic. And I think the last day that we kind of had a, a conversation about, I was telling him like, hey man, I just, I think maybe this isn't what I want to do. And I think maybe I want to give playing poker a shot. And we kind of had a you know chat about that over at breakfast. And that's kind of when the wheels kind of were starting to kick in my mind. It wasn't like, I, I think I had the idea of if I could get to the point, that point by maybe like November, December of 2020, this was before the pandemic, obviously, but, uh, <laughs> Then maybe I'd give it a shot, but then uh, obviously March, all the COVID stuff happened, and uh, I was laid off because our job wasn't as, wasn't essential. And uh, basically, I had kind of a trial run, if you will. Like I basically, because I couldn't do anything else, I just sat there and played all day long. And I realized I, I make I can make you know I made a little bit of money and I really enjoyed it. So I said, all right, I'm just gonna. We we came back to work for about a month, and at that point, I was like, yeah, I'm just I think I'm gonna try and pursue this and. So what are the first steps when you do that? When you want to pursue becoming a professional poker player? Yeah. um, Do you just play or do you study? Do you get coaching? Do you get into a group of people who support each other? It depends. I I think if I could do it over again, I did a lot of just playing. Like I just played, played, played. And I think if if I could go back, then I would have found coaching and, you know, a group of players to study with and um, try to develop myself because I think – it's kind of like any investment, you know, it kind of compounds on itself. So the better you get now, you know, three months from now, six months from now, that only, you know, kind of starts to compound. But if you don't improve, maybe wait that six months to start trying to get better, then you've kind of missed out on six months of improvement. And that, yeah, I think, I think, the, you know, the first steps is generally, yeah, you, you know, you try to, you know, figure out what games you can play and maybe try to figure out a good place to live so that you can, you know, where you can make money but still sustain your lifestyle. Um, I guess it's different for each player, but if I had advice for someone who was starting out now, I'd say try to get you know get as good as you can, as soon as you can. <laughs> but you do you do you do everything online, right? You do yeah, you 90, go to casinos. Eighty percent of my play is online. Yeah, it I don't. Is. I don't. I mean, the closest casino to me is Firekeepers, which is about forty five minutes, and it's just not worth the drive compared to the games that I can play online right now. So maybe that changes in a year. I don't know. Sure, but. you didn't feel compelled to have to be near a casino or in a region like Southeast Michigan. No. that... No, I, I like the 
the convenience of online too. Like I can, like my computer's right next to my couch, so I can sit there and play, and then I'm done. I can walk over to my couch and I'm done, and say, hey, you know, 10, 20 minutes later, I want to get back on and play. I can just walk right over and play. Which is like if I'm in a casino, I just got to drive there. Sure. Got to hope the game I want to play is running. I got to get a seat in the game. I got to sit there for seven, eight hours, and I got to drive back. I mean, it's just like for me, my day. I can, I can, you know. Have fun during the day and play it all in one day. Where it's just like I think if you played live poker, it's like basically you're just, you know, your day is playing. Absolutely. <laughs> because do if you mo- want to put in full time hours. Do most people do that now? I mean, is there is the casino thing kind of gone by the wayside or? Mm-hmm. No, no. I mean, it's kind of interesting because we have re- uh, regulated online poker in Michigan, so it's all legal. And um, if anything, like we, we people thought, oh, the uh, the the casinos are going to kind of str- struggle because people are going to have the ability to play from their couch and they're at home and. Bathing, the casinos have been just as busy, if not busier, before, since compared to before the sites launched. So, I think it's actually, I think it's helped the poker scene overall in Michigan by just giving people more of an avenue to play, and and maybe I, drumming up more interest in the games. Yeah, how did you get into the World Series of Poker? How did that journey? Ah, uh, well, I, it's funny, you know, for the people like ask me, oh, do you have to qualify or anything? It's like, no, for the main event, you just ten thousand dollars and you're in. <laughs> you just give you know, hand over your ten k and you get a seat at the tournament. And, and eight thousand people were doing that. Eighty six hundred, yeah. yeah, almost. Yeah, it was, oh, the record was eighty seven hundred. The record was eighty seven something when, in two thousand six, and we almost broke it this year. Came like within a hundred p- players of breaking it. So when you do that, do you have to like go to regional places and play first, or mm-hmm. you just go right to Vegas? You, you could fly to Vegas, you know, the day before the tournament starts, hand them ten thousand dollars, and you're in. It's really that easy. Yeah, and that's they, what that's what's great about that tournament is anybody can play. And, as long they, as you have the and they can seat you, and <laughs> mm-hmm. there's no problem that. Nope. Yeah, I mean that's where it's like cool. I played with one of the. I played with Phil Ivy. He's a fairly well-known name, and I've played a bunch against a bunch of, you know, amateur players. We're just there to have fun. It was that's what that's what was cool about the tournament was just the different people that you meet. It's not just professionals. So how long were you there? Vegas. I was there from the fifth till the sixteenth. Uh, I yeah, I was supposed to stay till the twenty-first, but I uh, decided I just yeah. I, after the main, I got out of the main event. I was there for two or three more days, and then I decided, hey. Uh, kind of over Las Vegas. I want to come home. So flew so you, back here to Lansing, Michigan. Yep. So you <laughs> yeah. had to pay for your place to stay. Yeah. Yeah. So and- me and uh, David were staying together. So yep. that kind of helped with the cost of the room. But yeah, let's no. talk a yeah. little bit about David. Yeah. And um, he's been a great friend uh, of you and Chris for years mm-hmm. as well. And it was really David who really kind of ventured into this first, wasn't it? Dave K. Who um, to- I was playing professionally first. He yeah. started doing, uh, he, he started uh, streaming on uh, Twitch. It's like a streaming platform uh late i think like july and august of 2020 so this is like right when i was starting to play um and he did that recreationally for like a year year and a half and then he he now does it professionally like he streams on twitch and basically he's a professional poker player and also a twitch streamer um i think his main goal is to um get us you know make most of his money off of his content uh, like his youtube channel is twitch i'm sure you'll link it in the description here but um, yeah, no, he, I would say I was, I played professionally first, but we both kind of been doing it a similar amount of time. Do you but, have a social media platform as well? Yeah, I have Twitter. I have Instagram. I mean, I'm not, I don't post too much on there, especially poker related, but cause my focus is more on trying to play. And so the more information I give out, the <laughs> worse it is for me. How but, was it having David alongside you in, uh, Vegas? Was, was that advantageous for you? I, I saw him standing like on the ropes or whatever they <laughs> yeah, do. I saw pictures real, of yeah. you. Got, yeah, on the real. So yeah, he got there on day four. Um, should probably mention my other friend. His name's Brad. He's from Cleveland. He's a friend I've kind of met through uh, poker. He's another professional player, and he was there the entire time. And the nice thing was, he last year in the same tournament made it to the day five, which is the same day I made it to. Um, and so each day, we you know he was hanging out with me, and kind of it was nice because he'd had experience playing in this tournament, so he kind of knew what I was going through, and he could give, he gave me some good advice. Um, I didn't always listen to it, but he did help me a lot. So it was cool to have him there. And then you had David too. I mean, David got in on day four. I think he landed like one o'clock and by two thirty, three o'clock, he was standing on the rail and he stood there all day until midnight or 1 a.m. And then the next day he came right back at noon and was there watching me until I got knocked out at like 5 p.m. So that was, you know, a lot of time for him just to be standing there. <laughs> wow. You know what? The I, I can... was both him and Brad, they were just kind of sitting there chatting, but they were there for 10 hours plus, which right. is crazy. And to me, they're but... just watching you play. Yeah. I mean, really just being there as a support system for yeah. you. Do you stop? Is there a time for you to be able to chat with them at all? Or yeah. do, how, how does that work in terms of breaks? And can you guys get up and walk away for a little bit? Yeah. I mean, so they you play two hours and you get a 20 minute break. Now, technically, you can get up and leave at the table whenever you want. Now, it's not smart because you're missing hands, which is not a good, you don't want to do that. Uh, but no, there's like, I mean, I could technically go up there and walk, talk to them whenever I want, but usually it was, I did it between those 20 minute breaks. So we just go and walk around a little bit. It was in valleys. So I usually just walk kind of out towards the front, which, uh, 
you could go outside and kind of get some fresh air and then come back in. But did you received a lot of support from I did. people? And mm-hmm. I always think that that is just so incredible. And you don't really know your support system until you get into something like that. And you start hearing from everybody. Yeah. Did that put a lot of pressure on you? Did you feel comfortable? Did you look at it a lot, or did you just kind of push that? to the back and like check it at night or just not even until you were completely done with a tournament? Um, I mean, it depended. Like if it was like, you know, Brad and David, I tried to keep them updated as much as I could. Um, some of the closer friends, I tried to keep them updated as much as I could too. Um, but it got to the point like on day four, I just had to start doing Twitter updates because I would literally be walking on those breaks and I'd be like sending like seven or eight different texts to different people who wanted updates. And I just found said, all right, guys, like I'm just gonna post it on Twitter. Follow me. It'll be right there. Like just, I, I kind of need some time to myself on these breaks because it's, very stressful tournament. Um, you know, it's, you know, any, it's a, because of the tournament at any given point, it could be over. Like you could lose all your chips in one single hand and it's done. Um, but no, like, it was just really cool. All the, my phone wouldn't stop going off even the next day. <laughs> I think it took me till like three or four o'clock the next day to finally answer every single message I had from Instagram, Twitter, text. And uh, I didn't expect it. I thought it was really cool. I just, that, you know, all the people that were wishing me well and hoping I was doing well. And, uh, <laughs> we had, uh, a bachelor party the weekend before I left with, you know, Chrissy was there and a few of our friends from Hazlitt and, um, I was telling those guys like, Hey, if I make the final table, I'm going to get you, we're all, you're all going to come out here. We're going to have like the second version of the bachelor party. <laughs> so when I got knocked out, I kind of felt bad. I was like, dang, like I wish I could have, you know, help those guys out. <laughs> you know, I you know, wish we could have kept the party going. But. Absolutely. Well, I have no doubt that you're going to have an opportunity again. Did this push you kind of on the, put you on the national scene a little bit? Did you get some, interest in or is it just really at any given time somebody can do well and it's not really a um i guess a showcase of you and your play going forward i mean i know that you want to get better uh but was it was it skill and luck and a combination of all those things uh yeah i mean there's to to get that far in a tournament that many people there's some luck involved like you have to you know be fortunate in certain spots to build your stack and i definitely had a couple spots where I, was I a favorite? Yeah, but I could have easily lost and not been there. Uh, I mean, I, there was one where I think I was, I think fifty seven forty three. Like I was fifty seven percent, fifty seven percent to win, and I I did end up winning, but forty three percent of the time I was out of the tournament. So it's just like spots like that you have to get fortunate. And um, yeah, I mean, to, anybody who gets that deep in the tournament, there's some luck involved for sure. I mean, yeah. usually the best players are going to get there, but not always the case. What but. is what does this mean for you going forward? I mean, obviously you probably have aspirations to get in again next year, mm-hmm. but how do you get better between now and then? And you know, uh, from a coaching perspective, and really studying this and getting yourself your, your own kind of professional development with your career. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think. Uh, but I mean, I do plan on playing uh, next year. I think when you, met, you know, ask the question of how do you, you know, get better or anything, and I know you, we're going to talk about coaching here, but it's like something my coaches really preach is consistency and just kind of show up putting in the work every day. And it's better to put in maybe two hours of work every day than like eight hours of work one day and then nothing the rest of the week. You know, you just kind of show up and continue to, you know, grind and put the put effort forward. And eventually you're going to, you know, get there and you're going to get better. Instead of trying to like, maybe trying to cram it all in at once, like I used to do in college, but <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love the honesty. But, yeah. and, well, you know, the maturity and development yeah. obviously helps with that too. Yeah. You probably you probably can't stay up as late as you used to either. Well, so. if anything, I I mean because of the way poker works, I stay up actually. Oh, pretty, you do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my standard schedule. I'm up till by two in the morning. I usually wake up at like ten or eleven. So you actually got me out of bed this morning, but uh, yeah, uh, it's just because you know people generally, generally want to play at later times, so. Yeah. Gotta play when people want to play. How do you discipline yourself to stop or, um, you know, really kind of calculate the kind of money that you want to make? Um, how you kind of evaluate all of that? And what kind of advice would you give to other people who might want to try and do this? So, me, I don't have like money goals. Like, I never set out with like a day, I'm going to make this much today just because I don't control that. Um, and I, and I don't have like a monetary goal for what I want to make in a month or a year. It's just more about like, okay, I want to show up make sure that the decisions I'm making are sound and, you know, thought out. Um, and then whatever happens, happens. And just, you know, I, you know, I don't want to put this, it's just more of a process oriented mindset. And it's something my coaches kind of preach to it's, you know, you don't, you just control the things you can control and I can't control what cards come out and when they come out, I can control, okay, what cards do I have? How do I react to that? How do I react to what my opponents are doing? You know, it's just, you know, you focus on the things that you can control. And I think that helps with your mindset. Um, and in terms of like when to quit, it's just more about, I don't, it's not like, again, I don't have an idea of like, okay, I'm up this much or down this much. I really don't even check my results when I'm playing. I just kind of play. Um, it's just more about like, how am I feeling? Like if I'm tired, I'll stop. If I feel good, I'll keep playing. 
it's just, you know, if I feel like I can continue to make good decisions, I play. If I feel like I'm starting to lose that, I, I quit. Do you see this as sustainable? I mean, are you, are you, do you have goals for yourself in regards to how long you think you might play? Uh, what this career looks like? You're going to write a book? <laughs> I mean, if I had it my way, I'd win the lottery tomorrow and be retired. But uh, <laughs> no. Um, I mean, I, I would say it's sustainable. Yeah. I think the U.S. market with regulation that's coming to, should be every state in the next five, 10 years, I would think. There's definitely a lot of opportunity here. And um, I'm just trying to set myself in a position to take advantage of that. Um, I think, yeah, I think poker's not going anywhere anytime soon. So, what's the next thing you're going to play in? I don't know. I mean, I'm just going to kind of stick back to my, go back to my uh, online grind that I've been on. You know, just kind of studying, playing like I do. I kind of, I just, I enjoy like kind of the same thing every day. Like, I don't really like traveling to, I mean, I, I do like traveling. I just don't like playing live poker all that much. Like, I don't see myself wanting to go to Vegas again this year. I might with, because David wants to go. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't, if some people, like yesterday, someone asked me my next tournament, as I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't have anything planned yet. So, who's been your greatest inspiration in kind of setting this up for yourself? I, I suspect besides you, <laughs> but who's been the biggest inspiration, and um, who kind of helps you along the way in terms of your guys in the coaching, and just even when you talk about playing at a table with Phil Ivy? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess I would say a lot of my inspiration. I'm just self motivated, but um, the, the great thing is with my coaches, there's some of the top players in the world and they play some of the biggest games in the world and so like I get to see an example every single day of how they operate and how they go about things and it's just kind of you know it's hard not to <laughs> get good and be ex be inspired when you see the the you know the, what the games they're playing and how they're playing and um, I would say I mean I, I guess I would say my inspiration is just you know me not wanting to fail <laughs> it's more than anything but also the, you know them too do you see yourself coaching no I no I don't see myself getting into coaching um, i I don't want to say I don't enjoy it. I just like playing and kind of doing my own thing. Let's so. talk a little bit about your career at, at Hazlitt. Um, <laughs> I know you had a lot of fun doing yeah. that. You played a lot of, as I said, basketball and baseball and golf. And did that teach you to be competitive uh, playing sports like that? And has that played well into the discipline of what you're doing now? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, you know, I was com basically competing all the time back when I was younger as, you know, in any sports and I was, I didn't like losing and, I think it's helped with poker because I've tried to put myself in a position where I am losing as little as possible. <laughs> that's kind of the thing with poker. I mean, you can, you know, it's all about putting yourself in the, in good situations in the right games, like playing against the right people so that you can make the most money. And I've had the attitude of, I want to get as good as I can so that I have as many opportunities to make money as possible. So like say like I log on and I see five guys that I want to play with, like, I, you know, I can't play, but yeah, I think I've gotten to the point in Michigan where I can log on and basically see anybody sitting and I don't have to worry about whether I can beat them or not. Now that could change, you know, if some people could get better, I could get worse. But I think that's been my motivator is it's been motivating for me is just trying to get to the point where I have options in terms of when I play and who I play. And I don't have to like, you know, avoid certain people or certain times because I don't want to, because I can't beat them, you know? So, you know, one of the things I've always loved about you, Dom, is and people know you know this, but one how one how kind you are, <laughs> but two how whip smart you are, and you know your mind works differently. And I think for that better that, or worse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's say it's for better right yeah. now. But I think that um, the way that you think, um, how your mind works, all of those kind of things has probably played very well for you in regards to this professional mm -hmm. career that you're having, and the discipline that you have and the talent and what you bring to it. And so I think everything about you that has been so positive through the years uh, bodes really well for you when you sit down at a table with some cards. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> um, I do want you to know how much I appreciate um, our years of friendship, uh, the opportunity. You are, are like a second son to me. You <laughs> sat around uh, the kitchen island at the Belters uh, a million times. Buttonwood uh, Drive. You bet. We've, we've had some great times there, too. Bryn talked about it a couple of weeks ago. But um, I want you to know that you will always be so important to me, and your success makes me happy. And so I wanted to bring you on this morning and chat a little bit about it. you got to come over to Grand Rapids and oh, see Chris and Abby's new house. <laughs> <laughs> and have an opportunity uh, to go out again. You want to give David a little shout out too before we go. I know you did it earlier, yeah. but can you give his um, his online? How do you connect with David K. Poker? So uh, YouTube, he's David K. Poker. Uh, Twitch, David K. Poker. I think you know he's kind of boring in that regard, but uh, <laughs> those are his uh, uh, his Twitch and YouTube channels. 
Um, and yeah, you know, thanks for having me on. You've been kind of a great influence on me ever since I, you, me, and Chrissy became friends all that all that time you know ago. And I uh, also want to say congrats to Chris and Abby on their purchase of their house. Uh, it's awesome. Happy for you guys. And uh, saw the pictures of my room. You know, you painted it gray. It looks good. And uh, <laughs> just want to make sure you know I, it better be spotless the you're first com- time I show up to the house. You're coming over That's for, for you, your Abby. bedroom. Stay- <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Abby. Get Dom's room. That better ready. be spotless. Um, <laughs> please go home and say hi to David and Janelle and will Derek do. and Drew for me as well. Uh, you will always be a Hazlitt guy. Uh, I want you to have great success going forward. And if I can ever be of help to you, you know you can always count on me. <laughs> You bet? Yep. All right, buddy. <laughs> yep. I want to thank my guest today, Dom Choma, professional poker player and all-around great guy. I also want to thank my supporting sponsors, Doubting Industries, Governmental Consultant Services, AF Group, Public Affairs Associates, and Mercantile Bank. You can connect with me uh, on all of my podcasts at connectwithkb.com. Until we connect again, go live your best life. I'm your host, Kristen Belzer. Kristen Belzer.